Hello there. Um, yes, I'm in the back of beyond because today I'm doing a review, a concert review of when I was at a fortnight ago. This was uh, the Rolling Stones on their No Filter tour uh, up in Edinburgh, uh, Murrayfield Stadium, which is Scotland, obviously. So, um, yeah, I've taken my time here to make this review since it was a fortnight ago. But I've been really busy the last month, which is why I haven't done many reviews or videos or anything like that because. Um, uh, I've just been really busy. I was in America for a fortnight and then, yeah, just been busy. But anyway, we have attacked since then. Paul McCartney's shoved out two new singles, which are very good. But we're not talking about that today. We're doing this Stones concert review up at Murrayfield. So, um, Rolling Stones, Richard Ashcroft supporting. Uh, I'll do this in a very similar fashion to my Noel Gallagher review. Um, when I reviewed his concert the other week, however long ago that was now. Um, so I should point out, by the way, if you hear any noises, it's cars, because I am sort of sat on the side of a road here, which is just there. I'm assuming that picked it up there when I turned it around. And that's England over there in the distance, and those hills of the Lake District. You probably can't see them. Anyway, I've gone off topic. So anyway, uh, the venue, Murrayfield Stadium. It was very good, actually. I like Murrayfield. It's a good stadium. Here comes a car now, so if you hear a noise. But yeah, Murrayfield. Good stadium. I think it holds 90,000 people uh, for rugby matches. It's a rugby stadium, but normally it just does a um, in concerts. It's about 60,000, and I believe it had a, it was a sellout. It was 60,000 people there, and I think nearly all 60,000 people were there for the support act. Richard Ashcroft, of course, of the Verve. He did eight songs, five of which were Verve songs. I think it was five of them. I'm saying five, like I'm confident. I'm not 100% confident. Uh, but there was definitely five Verve songs, there might have been more. But yeah, he did at least a couple of solo songs, but he did eight in total. Uh, the standout tracks were The Drugs Don't Work and Bittersweet Symphony, which is quite ironic seeing him do it at a Stones concert, but I suppose it was Adolf Klein that um, uh, took that song, the Stones didn't really have much to do with it. But yeah, um, the crowd were really singing along, and it wasn't like Back to Jury at no, where everyone didn't seem to want him there, although I've changed my mind with Baxter since... I did my no con concert review. I've become very fond of him. Uh, I've bought his record and it's really good actually. I recommend checking it out. Uh, but anyway, Richard Ashcroft, Bittersweet Symphony. The crowd singing on that was amazing. Goosebumps moment. And then obviously, so he was on about quarter past seven, I think. He came off about quarter to eight, eight o'clock. And then after that, the Stones came on. And they got going with an all, cl with an all time classic, Start Me Up. Um, Keith actually screwed up the intro, so we know they were live at least. But yeah, um, in my opinion, every Stones concert should start with Start Me Up. And uh, something I will say, the set list we had at Edinburgh, I think, was the best of the whole tour. Uh, up to now, there are, um, I think it's well, this t-shirt I got at um, this concert, by the way. Uh, f last night they played Berlin, so they finished the UK leg. Because I think the whole reason for this tour was really for a UK bit of it. That was the main bit. And of all the shows I did here in the UK, I think the Edinburgh one was the best set list. And I'm not just saying that because I was at it. But uh, I genuinely, if I hadn't been that, I would still have said this. I know I would have. Because every song was brilliant. And Start Me Up, a perfect way to start a Stones concert. Um, yeah, in my opinion, it should be the way every Stones concert starts. So uh, after that, they went into Let's Spend the Night together. Um, again, really, really good. This, uh, I think this one should always be done early on, like they do. Um, really good. It was nice to get Keith doing his backing vocals on this one, because it's not often Keith does backing vocals these days. But on that one, he did, so I was pleased about that. Uh, then after that was It's Only Rock and Roll. Again, fantastically done. Um, yeah, crowd sing along on the chorus. Fantastic. Uh, after that, we had Tumbling Dice off Exile on Main Street. Uh, again, very good. You've got a nice pattern here. It was done very, very well. And the backing singers, uh, I've forgotten her name. The, oh, what's she called? I should have read it. I should have checked it. I've got the programme at home as well with all the um, personnel. I'm tempted to say it's Sasha or something like that. But yeah, she was doing backing vocals and she was very, very good. Um... What was after that? Then they did Under My Thumb, which was a turn for the book, a uh, surprise actually, because uh, I wasn't expecting Under My Thumb. It's normally the vote song, that one, but they did it, track song five. 
and I've never been a fan of it live. I've always thought, recently at least, I've done it a bit. It sounded a bit crap. Um, I didn't mind it back in the day on like the '69 tour and uh, even up to 1981 on the uh, what was it called? The was it the Tattoo You tour or did it have a different name? Anyway, that last concert they did um, at Roundhay Park was it that the name of it? The bit in Leeds. Um, again, it was fantastically done back then. It was like faster. Whereas these days, they seem to try to do them as close to the record as they can. And I've always thought under my thumb live, without the xylophone or whatever it is Brian Jones played, uh, wasn't very good. But, so when they did it there, I was taken aback. I'd been wrong. It was amazing. My mind was, but it was so good. And the whole crowd was sort of clapping along and singing and dancing about. So yeah, very, very good. Then after that we've got Ride Em On Down, which is off the album Blue and Lonesome, their most recent one. So what they seem to do each night is um, they interchange between two songs off that album, Just Your Fool and Ride Em On Down. Now personally I prefer Just Your Fool to Ride Em On Down, but I'm not going to complain because it's still a good song, Ride Em On Down. But yeah, it's not a very long one, it's only about 2-3 minutes. Uh, yeah, it was decent enough. And then after that was the Vote song. So for Edinburgh we had the choice between She's a Rainbow, Gaff My Cloud, Shattered, no it wasn't Shattered, it was um, Bitch and uh, what was the other one, Heartbreaker. So um, as good as Bitch and Heartbreaker is, it was a two horse race between She's a Rainbow and Get Off My Cloud. And of all the votes they did for the whole tour, this one was actually the closest, it was really close. I thought they'd actually possibly do both songs because it was that close but they didn't. Uh, She's a Rainbow came out on top, that was the one they did. And then if you've watched my review of their Satanic Majesty's Request, you will know that um, that is my favourite Stone song. So yeah, I'm not complaining, they did that one, they did it brilliantly. Uh, I loved it, loved it. And to say I got to see it live, I think it's the only time it's ever been done live in the UK. So that's not a bad thing to say, you know, because most people who were at that concert will never have seen it live. Unless they're one of these people who follow them around the world or have come from another country to see it. But yeah, so that was a good one. And then after that we got You Can't Always Get What You Want. Uh, again, brilliantly, uh, they didn't have the choir. They sometimes have the choir with them, they didn't this time, they haven't on this tour. Which doesn't bother me because I'm not the biggest fan in the world of the choir bit, I think it goes on too long. I much prefer the single version where it cuts out the choir, it just starts straight the guitar. So, that was the version we got, it was very good. Uh, crowd sing along as well on the chorus, um, You Can't Always Get What You Want. Uh, is, I've put the video up actually of uh, all the footage, so if you want to see what I'm on about, you probably should have, I should have said this at the start, you should probably watch that video first. It's a long one, because um, it's a very good concert, they're a very good band, that's why it's so long. But yeah, you kind of always got what you want, very, very good. Uh, after that we got, I think it was Painted Black next, which um, I've always thought, can this song really work without the sitar? I've always been a bit, mm, a bit live about the sitar of O'Brien. But again, Ronnie Wood did a decent enough job on his electric guitar filling in for Brian. And yeah, it was really, really good. It was mind-blowingly good actually. It was very, very close to the record just without the sitar. And mixing it brilliantly. The crowd was sort of, you know, stamping about to the uh, drums. Yeah, really good. Uh, after that, we got Honky Tonk Women. Um, again, classic, uh, great riff. Keith played it not perfect. Mix sang it perfect. In fact, it sounded just like the record, other than on the chorus, he doesn't hold the, the really long note anymore. Uh, but the crowd did it for him. Um, yeah, again, fantastic. Done live brilliantly. Like I said, sound like the record from 69. Uh, then after that, Mick did the band introductions, then he buggered off for a bit, and Keith came up and sang. And he started off with You Got the Silver, which is a very slow acoustic sort of blues thing that they did off uh, Let It Bleed. He did a brilliant job of this, it was it was really, really good. And a lot of people don't really pay much attention when Keith sings. I noticed a lot of people sat down when in the seats when uh, Keith was singing. But yeah, he was very, very good on this song. And then after that he did Happy off Exile on Main Street. So, um, Happy. This song is fantastic on the record. I love it on Exile on Main Street. And it used to be brilliant live. However, unlike Mick, Keith's voice has um, not aged as well. It's kind of gone. 
and he can't really sing this one very well. I think the um, smoking doesn't really help, but um, well, it won't be helping. That's what caused it. But uh, yeah, it was it was decent enough to be honest with you. Um, I mean, it's as good as it's ever going to be. It's my favourite song Keith's ever sang in the Stones, with lead vocals on. And um, sorry, I've just been distracted. There's a sheep running around over there. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what it's doing. Um, but on the chorus, you didn't actually sing it. Uh, the backing singers would sing "I Need a Love," and then Keith should be singing "To Keep Me Happy," but he didn't sing it. He just nothing. He just kept quiet. And I stood there thinking, Keith, why are you not singing? He, he sang bits of it, but he didn't sing it all the time. But yeah, it was decent enough. Not um, watch a video of him doing it on the '72 tour and watch it now, and you'll see it's night and diff. It's night and day difference. Even on the Sun Girls tour, his voice had kind of gone on that song. I think the '76 tour was it in '76 when they were supporting Black and Blue. I think that was the last time he did it properly with his voice able to do it right. Whatever. Uh, then Mick came back on and they did "Sympathy for the Devil," opening track of 1968 to "Beggar's Banquet." Um, it's a classic. Pyrotechnics were on this one with a load of smoke coming in the stadium, fireworks going off, it all went red. The crowd spent the whole seven minutes going woo woo. Um, yeah, fantastic, really good. Then we got Miss You. Uh, I love this song, but and I didn't know whether I should bring this up, but I, I think I should. Camera died there, sorry about that. Uh, so, as I was saying, some of it, what was I saying about Miss You? Um, I was going to say complain. Um, the record is about three, four minutes long. For some reason, live, they feel the need to drag it out seven, eight minutes. And uh, it just. So, um, what they do to drag it out so long, the bit between where Mick goes, what's the matter with you, boy, and then the saxophone solo kicking him, uh, the, there's a bass solo now. I don't know, this is just me, this is just me personally, I have zero interest in a bass solo. It's just like a drum solo, I do not want to hear a bass solo, and I think the only reason I do it is just to make a big sort of like, to uh, Bill Wyman. Um, which was the one thing this concert was missing, Bill Wyman's bass. So, because Bill would never do a bass solo, so I think they get this guy, I've forgotten his name, to do a bass solo, just to make the point of, we don't need Bill anymore, look what we've got instead, we've got someone who'll do a bass solo, do a bass solo, just to prove the point. If that makes sense, but you know, and it went on for about two minutes. This bass solo, and I'm not going to fault Mick jumping around the stage and dancing the way he was at 74 years old because he was brilliant. But why it's not on the record? We don't need a bass solo. Then after that, they did Midnight Rambler. Now, I like Midnight Rambler. Uh, I go, I know fine well when you go to a Stones concert, you're going to get Midnight Rambler, but. These days, it's about 15-20 minutes long, which is far, far, far too long. I don't know how many people, everyone seems to go to the toilet during this song, and what have you, how to get drinks. Um, when they did it live in on the 69 tour, which is on Get Your Yaya's Out, which I am going to review that album soon, actually. Um, they did it for the 9 minutes, which is also the version on Hot Rocks, they did it for 9 minutes, which is long enough. I don't know why they feel they need to do it 15-20 minutes when they've just done Miss You for nearly 10 minutes. Um, yeah, it went on a little too long, I thought, you know, it was, I mean, it, they were brilliant at it, I do like the song, but it's just, it got the, the record's only six minutes, so why do they feel I need to drag it out? And, I don't want to sound greedy here, but the time they spent with these extra unnecessary parts of Miss You and Midnight Rambler, they could have done a couple of other songs, like Angie, or Wild Horses, or Ruby Tuesday, or Street Fighting Man, for example. Not that I'm complaining, because the set list was out of this world, but they're just little tiny things that they could have added just to make it even more out of the world, out of this world. But yeah, it went on too long, I thought. But it picked up a little, you know, I thought they kind of lost people in that song, but it did pick up after that with uh, Jumping Jack Flash. Um, nothing unnecessary added to this one, it's just like the record done absolutely brilliantly, no perfect. Um, and just like afterwards, Brown Sugar, perfect. The only slight little thing is Keith doesn't do his backing vocals anymore, but he probably couldn't do them like on the record. He didn't even do them on the 72 to us, so. But I'm not gonna complain about that. It was done brilliantly. Um, perfect, perfect song. And then they went off and then for a few minutes and they did the encore where they came back on to Gimme Shelter. Again, the way Keith played that riff, which is probably the best opening riff to a song of all time, was not perfect and Mick sang it perfectly and then uh, I can't remember what the girl's called 
she sings it. It's the same one as on Tumbling Dice. What did I say she was called? Sasha or something. Um, it used to be Lisa Fisher, but I think around 2015 she quit. And uh, this girl, she's good. She, well, she's better than me. Uh, <laughs> and better than most people, but she's not in the same league, I don't think, as Lisa Fisher. And she's definitely not in the same league. Oh, I'm going to embarrass myself. But I forgot what she, the original woman's got on the record. Oh, I can pretty see her. I can see her face as well. I know exactly what she looks like, but she's not as good. She was good, but not that good. But, um, you know, it was still brilliant. It was mind-blowingly good. And then they finished with Satisfaction. Um, you know, perfect. Uh, this song they dragged out eight minutes when the record's only three. But I'm not going to complain about this one because um, it wasn't any. It didn't feel like it. And it was the last song anyway. So fair enough with the pyrotechnics and everything of all the fireworks going off in the sky. It was amazing and a fantastic way to end a fantastically brilliant concert. So um, yeah, like I said, this I thought was the thing was a motorcyclist. The, this is the best concert I've ever been to, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, yeah, it was amazing. If you get the chance to see them, please, please do, while you've still got the chance. Um, Mick Jagger for his age is amazing. But yeah, I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10, this concert, I've got to. So um, it's getting very windy and cold actually, so I'm going to go now. So uh, thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time. Cheerio.